Hey everyone, it's Jeannie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing, and I'm getting ready to stitch out OESD's newest tiling scene, which is Everett's Cottage. And this is a Thomas Kincaid um, inspired tiling scene. Isn't it gorgeous? So I want to show you how I prep to do these. So first thing, this is my background fabric. I'm not going to press it because I'm going to press it when I adhere my shape flex to it. But I am using, and we have this at this store too, so if you need it, I'm going to be using, um, this is Moda. Uh, it's mar their, their marble line, and it is vanilla. So if you look at this here in the upper right-hand corner of the tiling scene, that's going to be the background fabric. And most of it's going to get covered over by all this beautiful stitching. I don't know how many stitches this is, but I'm going to guess that it's probably at least a million stitches to do this project. But I thought this was kind of perfect, and I really like it because it's tone on tone, so it's not going to be like solid, and that kind of looked like what the sky was to me. Um, I don't know what they use to actually create the sample, but OESD usually uses uh, Benartex fabric. But I saw this, and I was like, this is perfect. This is what I'm going to use. Um, I find that I can, I didn't count these up, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Yeah. It's their normal 32. So I find that I can fit in each strip cause I'm going to cut these into strips. I can fit seven, six to seven. I usually make a mistake somewhere along the way, but, um, I do 12 inch strips. I leave it on. I used to cut like, I used to cut it all apart and just do each, like cut for each hooping. But what I found that works better for me is that I will just leave it on the strip and hoop and re-hoop. So make sure you put your fold. So I feel like I will probably only need four strips of 12 inches. So I can get usually get away with so here's a strip, 12 inches. So I'm going to cut this 12 inches. I should complete that thought, right? Because I'm going to be in my five by seven hoop. Did I get it? I have a little spot on my blade that really should replace my blade. So now I'm going to cut 24. So that'll be um, seven 14, that's how many tiles I can fit in. But I I usually just figure it out for uh, six. Okay, so here's one strip, two strips. And I can do one more. 12 inches. I don't know if you can even see that. Can you even see that? Here we go. My new table and everything is so amazing. I can't even tell you how like happy I am. So let me cut this last strip. So that would be, let's say I can do seven. So that would be seven, 14, 21. This is 14. 21 and two more strips that should be enough for me I took the last piece at the store oh look it I could actually but two more should should do it for me I wonder if I could get a better angle See if I can get an angle this way. Here we go. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna heat up my iron. That's over here at my other station. We're gonna iron. I 
nice to kind of prep everything ahead of time, right? So you can just grab and go. And I could do some sideways right here. Okay, so that was, this is 28. And this will be 35, which will let me uh, make three mistakes. And this I'll keep because, so really I think, I mean, if you do it like I do, two yards. Two yards. They recommend three and a half yards, and I think that is overkill. Two yards will do it. Now, the next thing you need to do is we need to cut our shape flex. So uh, the directions want you to stabilize your background fabric with a fusible woven. So um, OESD sells fusible woven on the roll, but I love just pell on shape flex, and I will measure it out. I should abut my, um, now that I have this space, I should abut my uh my cutting mats or next time there's a free freight because i hate paying freight i'm gonna order a long cutting mat that's gonna like cover over my table so this is 20 inches so what i'll do because this is cut from salvage to salvage and salvage to salvage is usually 44 inches you might lose a little bit and we don't have to go all the way from the icky edge to icky edge like I'm going to get rid of the very edge part because that's going to go under my hoop. So we have 36 plus 36 plus, let's say, 8. 36 uh, plus 8 is going to be 44. So I'm going to cut this 44 inches. And then I'm going to cut it right down the middle. That will give me a 10-inch strip, two 10-inch strips. I'm gonna iron that down the center of my 12 inch strips because it doesn't have to go edge to edge. And this is how I do my filing seams. So I'm gonna need a couple of these. So here we go. There, and then we'll go. and flat. I don't even know if I can get that long. There's one. And we'll take this and we'll cut it in half down the middle. So we'll have two long 10 inch strips. And it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm just going to kind of fold this up and then I'll cut 10 inches down the middle. Here we go, here we go. Because this is 20 inches, right? Yep. Sometimes I go, did I imagine that? Did I make that up? All right, so here is my 10 inch by 44 inches. That's going to get ironed down the center of my 12 inch by 44 inches. So let me go ahead and do, uh, we have five of them, right? Five times, yes. So we'll do, um, we are in the middle of everything to, today at our house. We're starting a remodel. We are having the lawn mode today. Beautify Mulligan House Day. So if you hear a lot of commotion, that's what's going on. Okay, here's my next strip. Cut up the eight. A little before the eight, fine too. down the middle.
Carlos is headed towards the backyard. I'm oh, can you bring the dogs in? in? She can come down here. Dear, like every time you go Okay, so that is we're saying seven per I want you to shoot for six. Even five. Five is fine too. I'm a professional. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm a professional that needs extra. Hang on, let me shut that door. I'm a professional that needs the extra, like, room. So, um, 7, 14, 21, 28, and then I'm going to cut one more set. This is why you need to just buy Shape Flex on the bolt. And usually if you buy a bolt from us, it comes on 25 yards. And then uh, you get 30% off. So you can always buy a, a bolt. I want to say it's like 150 some odd dollars. And then you get 30% off. So why not? Just buy the bolt and then you're not worried about, oh my goodness, am I running out? Oh my goodness, it's a Sunday. And I don't have any shape flex. You don't worry because you go, oh. I have a whole bolt. All right, now I'm gonna put this away. Done with the shape flex. Fold it over and cut down the middle in half. It is so I have an extra strip and I, I do a lot of tiling scenes so I'll just keep it for when I do my next tiling scene and I need my 10 inch strips and now they're already cut. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to press the shape flex down the middle of our background fabric strips. I'll see you over at the iron. Okay, now that our fabric is cut and you have 12 inch strips with the fabric, and that means from selvage to selvage, you are now going to go ahead and... So I had an incident with my iron today where it, uh, it spit out a whole bunch of icky brown water and then would not turn on again. And I thought, oh my goodness, my iron is ruined and I need a new iron. So I called Aliso and they sent me this, um, this like troubleshooting list of like how I could, how I could fix it. And I'm ecstatic because I guess this iron is like everything else and it just needs to be reset every once in a while. So, and now it's working great. So I'm very, very happy. Okay. So I just gave that a little bit of an iron. I'm going to take my 10 inch, inch piece and now I'm going to iron it straight down the middle. Can you see that? I'm not going to go right to the salvage. I'm starting probably about, I don't know, an inch back, but I am kind of going to, I am going to position it down the middle. So, you know, there's about probably an inch, inch and a quarter on each side. When we put our hoop down, we don't need our shape flex to go edge to edge. Like if you look at this, this is going to, the shape flex is all going to be where I need it to be. Do you see that? And you don't need to worry about those outside edge pieces. You don't need to worry about here because we're going to hoop it and that's going to be out of my embroidery area or my hooping area. I was really, really bummed when that happened to my Aliso because before I had my Aliso, I had, and I actually still have it, it's in my closet. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful iron. It's a Rowenta, and it sits on a tank, and it has one of those big, thick um, fabric cords. It hurts my shoulder, though. So it sits on a tank, so I have to grab it from the tank, lift it off, and put it down. What I love about the Oliso is I love that I can just take my hand off of it. It rises up 
and then I can press my next section of fabric and I don't have to lift it up, put it on a tank, pull it down. It is so much easier on my shoulder than my Rowenta was. Now, when you go to press your fusible woven, and this is Shape Flex, it's Pellon Shape Flex 101. I also carry this in black, and I have it here at my house in black. So if I'm doing a tiling scene like um, Starry Night Santa or Enchanted Santa, and that's going to be on dark blue fabric, then I'll use uh, a dark colored Shape Flex. If I'm doing something on a light colored fabric, then I will use the white. And you just wanna, the Shape Flex ad adheres with time and moisture. So you just wanna make sure that you're leaving your iron down long enough and that you're using steam or best press or something. You also wanna make sure that you're going from one direction to the other direction. Don't, don't start here and then here and then get a big bubble in the middle. I thought that was it for my iron, that it was done. It was gonna go in the trash can. And Patrick goes, well, you use that iron, you've had it for a long time and you use it all the time. My other iron, um, I got as a wedding present. So that was back in 2000. And I think it, I think it broke right before we moved here. So 2000 to 2019. But that iron didn't see the light of day for years. I use this iron so much more because I don't iron clothing. Who irons clothing anymore? I know some of you still iron clothing. If you want to iron from this side, you can too, just to make sure everything is adhered really well. Okay. I'm not gonna bore you. I'm gonna go ahead and press the other pieces. I'll be right back. Okay, I have all of my strips and they are stabilized with Shape Flex right down the middle. So I am done with these. These I'm just gonna put to the side. They're ready to go. I can just grab and go. Next thing, I'm gonna pre-cut my stabilizer. So the recommendation is if you look at the, uh, the supply list here, it says um, two rolls of heavyweight tearaway. So here's our heavyweight tearaway and they call for 15 inches because what they want you to do is they want you to use your stabilizer like that. However, what I like to do, and you've gotta be comfortable with this because it does not go from edge to edge. I, again, cut my stabilizer 15 inches I need a big old 15 inch ruler. So I cut 15, oh, I'm sorry, 12 inches. Oh, perfect. This is a 24 inch ruler. So I cut this the same width as my, um, as my fabric and I fold them in half. So here's my other piece. And you'll see how I'm gonna hoop. You're gonna see it doesn't quite go from edge to edge, but this is what I do and I've never had any problem. If that makes you uncomfortable though, when I show you and you, you go, oh, I don't think I can do that, then I want you to go ahead and cut bigger pieces. But I usually cut mine 12 inches and then I fold them in half and they're ready to go. So I'm gonna need 32 of these because I have 32 tiling scenes. And at some point, I really want to try, um, I really want to try doing this with some kind of other stabilizer. This sh the heavyweight stabilizer, it's heavy. And so when you go to sew it all together, I mean, that's the hardest part is sewing it all together. But it is a really heavy stitch count. So you do need some support. 
So I'm not gonna let, make you watch me do this. That's three out of my 32. This piece right here, I'll save this because I'll use this for um, for my four inch hoop. I have a little basket that's filled with stabilizer. Might be too small. Let me cut out that icky part. May or may not work. I love this window because I can, I always keep these. I take them and I stuff them right in here, just like that. Then you know what stabilizer you're using. And again, I'm going to, I have, uh, what was that? That was um, three. So I need 29 more pieces and I'll fold them all in half and those will be ready to go. Usually I get bored of cutting them. So I cut like half and then I'll cut the other half later on. But... I'm just going to bust them all out right now and cut this one first, maybe 24, 12, and fold it in half, top to bottom. Okay, I'll actually finish this later. Just gonna, it's, that's a good thing to do while you're stitching. Next thing I'll do is I'll prep my thread. When I'm doing an isocord, I'm sorry, an OESD tiling scene, I, um, I almost always use isocord thread because I have tried to pick my own pictures and it never ends well. So, on page two of your instructions, here's your color list. I have all these colors. I went through them all, except I need ash blue, forest green, and the pearl, pearl essence light purple. So um, they were sold out of forest green, and I didn't grab ash blue, but these are all the other colors. Some of them are brand new to me. Um, the ones that I pulled from my stash. You're going to see I wrote the number up on the top because I'm going to do this on my 10 needle and I just like to look up there and see what color I have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that for all the rest of my threads. So, and I put these all in order from the beginning to the end part. These, all you have to do is just pull that off the top and you are done. So this is color two. 30. Here, I need some more light over here. Is that too much? So I'm going to write 230 right here around the band in three different spots. So 230, 230. Oh, actually, this I might be able to write in four spots. And 230. Whoops, got a little ink there, but that'll be fine. So you're going to go ahead, and you don't have to do this. But I like to do that because, like I said, I'm going to be doing this on my 10 needle. And that way, when it's over, you know, I don't know, two, two feet from, from me, I don't have to walk over there, stand on my tippy toes and try and read that little itty bitty number there. This is color 352. I can just put it on the upper part of this. 352. And 352. Three fifty-two, three fifty-two, and three fifty-two. There you go. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'll go through all my threads and make sure everything is labeled and ready to go. Like this, I used to do it in two spots, like here and here, but now. I've gotten to the point where I do it in three spots or even four. 763 and 763. Okay, see you in a little bit. 
So here is my multi-needle and I have it set up with a luminous light right there. Look at the difference in lighting. So that's with my light on, that's with my light off. I mean, it makes a huge difference. I'm gonna turn it back on. Um, I haven't done a video on this, but things I love about this new table is I have a spot there to put my extension table. So it just kind of slots in. So you have a place for it. Um, there's all this storage, which I need to get some hooks for here because I'd really like to hang my hooks in there. And I put my bolts of stabilizer and little notions, and then I have a drawer. One of the things I love about this table is this fold-out leaf. So I can put it up or I can put it down. Right now I have it up because that's going to be where I kind of lay out my thread. And I can't put a filming arm over here, so maybe I'll just bring it towards me a little bit and then we can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my threads right now um, and I'm just going to kind of get them ready. Then I'll show you how I hoop. So for our first one, and that is going to peak. This is an important page right here because this is going to be our layout. So block number one, and I kind of will go in order. The other thing that I'll do is I'll look at them if they have a lot of similar colors. Like, you know, this part has a lot of similar colors. I'll try to stick to the ones that have a lot of the similar colors. So I might not necessarily go in order of how this is stitched out, but maybe I should do this over here. So I'm gonna bring this over here and then we'll transfer it. But I'm going to go ahead and start. Ooh, I don't want to let you see that. I get in trouble for that, leaving my blade up and open. So block number one, here are all my colors. And I'm just going to pull them out. Um, blues. Let's put these all up here, too. I can find them. 39. And now you can see how easy it is to read the tops. So we want... Here we go, 39.53, and I'm just gonna lay them out in a row. 53.74, and you'll start to get to know your colors. Like, you'll start to look at them and be like, oh, that's that color that I need. Okay, uh, background trees, that is actually the color I don't have. 53.74, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna have to skip those for now. Yes, 53.74 and 38.53. So 53.74, I cannot do tile one or two, or I could do this one, I think, as long as that's the color. I, I'm i missing also 38.53. So as long as, oops, 38.53, I cannot do this one either. 38.53, that will get put to the side. 38.52 and 53.74, I can do that one. Let's do that. So that is gonna be 8.70. Here we go, 8.70. Where's my little tray? Eight seven. I'll start here in the beginning. Eight seven zero, Thirteen forty six, eighteen seventy four, eleven thirty three. Oh, look at that. Skipped a spot. Eleven thirty three and eleven forty one. 
in 870. And these are going to have a lot of the similar colors. So I'm going to take that. Let's go put that on the machine. Let's see if there's any color here that's not in here because we'll do this block next. Um, it looks like 873 is on here. So let's put that on here. Let's look at the next page because we want to put at least 10 colors up there right now. This is 870, 3852, 1161, and 870, 870, 3852, 53, 5374. Is that the color I don't have? That's the color I don't have. We can't do this one. But let's look at block number nine. Oh, this is going to have a lot of colors. Let's see if there's another block similar to these other ones. Look how gorgeous these are. They're just so pretty. Okay, there are not. So from there, because these blocks are, oops. These blocks are up here. Let's just go into maybe 15 and 16 because they'll probably share some colors. So, fifty-three. Of course, fifty-three seventy-four is like the most important color of all. Fifty-three seventy-four. Fifty-three seventy-four. 50, 374. I might have to find a substitution. So I'm going to bring home my color list um, from the store, the, the color card. I thought I had one here, but I didn't. Okay, 5374 apparently is the most important color. 5374, 5374. <laughs> and we might be stuck with just doing the couple of blocks. Oh, here we go. Nope. 5374, 5374, and 5374. So what we're going to do is let's start with these, and then I might have to find a substitute for 5374 um, just to get this started. So we'll go ahead and start with these because we have all the colors, and we're going to tie them off. So if you have never done a tiling scene before or worked with a 10 needle, once you tie it, you leave it threaded, and then you just tie off. So I'm just going to go and then we'll pull through. So here's one. I'm going to tie my knot. Fifty-three seventy-four is the most important color. I have so much thread. I'm sure I have something that's going to be a match, but they are currently sold out of that color at OESD. And now I know why. Because everyone wants it for Everett's Cottage. And not a big deal. I'll find a little match. That's why it's important to have the color card. I'm thinking I have one here somewhere. I just don't know where it is. I'm going to have to take another looky look see around it's okay this will give us a start i feel like i'm just starting to roll the rock down the hill and I'm good with that. And 
I think I put these in order, but I might not have. And we're just one color short. So we almost have all 10. Okay, once you have them all tied up, now you can go ahead and pull them through. So I have not run my multi-needle in a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and touch my screen and I'm gonna oil because I haven't oiled. So I'm gonna take this out, give my hook an oil. Every time you start the machine, you could, should give it a drop of oil. About a drop. There, that's a drop for sure. That's it, just one drop of oil. Very little maintenance. I must have been doing a tiling scene because I have red in here. And I don't want red right now. Red is for the last stitch out. So we're gonna put a pause in for that. And I use all sorts of bobbins. These right here are Magna Glides, and I love these. These are what the machines come with. They used to come with Coates and Clark um, paper-sided bobbins, and I have plastic-sided bobbins, and I have these, and I just use everything because it's not a picky machine. All right, so that drop of oil is done. Brand new bobbin is in there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and thread, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, we're on needle number one. This is all you do. So everything is al already threaded. All I'm going to do is grab right here at the needle. I'm going to pull down until the knot is through. Right here's the knot. And then I'm going to touch my threading button. Let me put this closer over here so you can see. Oh, that's as far as it'll go. Here you go. There's my threading button right here. Brings my threader forward, and I'm just going to go around here. It's going to cut. And then it brings the thread to the back, and we are done. It's that easy. Now I'm going to touch over here, so I go to needle number two. Same thing, gonna grab my thread. Here's my knot, my knot's through. Touch my threading button. You gotta be okay with wasting a little bit of thread. And you know me, I do not like to waste. So that was a little hard for me to get over, but I've since gotten over that. We're gonna go needle number four. I'm gonna grab right here at needle number four. Just hoisting my rope, there's my knot, bring my threader forward, and that is done. Needle number five. Threader forward, threader back. Did that work? Cause I grab that. Needle number six. Sorry, I have to go right here cause I can't see. From my side angle. There's my knot and then thread her forward. Cut your thread. Bring your threader back. Number seven. Knot is through. Thread her forward. Bring it up and around and cut your thread and thread her back. This is how easy it is. Then we're going to go ahead and program it. eight and we're going to do needle number nine so if you can tie a knot and you can pull your thread you should be able to use a multi-needle okay we're done threading i threaded um nine needles now what we're going to do is we're going to program so we are doing this block right here, number five. Oh, I haven't even shown you how to uh, hoop yet, but let me tighten this up. Okay, here we go. Pulling a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna go in here into my settings. Whoops, sorry. And I wanna make sure that my manual color sequencing is on. So fabric, that, so we don't need any of that. Eco mode brightness, love that. And manual color sequencing, make sure that's on. So it's page seven of 11 on my machine, but you can find it anywhere. 
This is our thumbnails. I'm going to make mine bigger, just like that. And we are going to Everett's Cottage. Oh, USB is not loaded. USB is loaded. USB is not loaded. Let me go my lower port C. Interesting. I know he's on here. Okay, I'll be right back. Maybe my something's wrong with my USB. Okay, I'm not sure what that was all about, but my USB... The one I was trying to use is working now. I went ahead and plugged this in my top port and that way I'm not pulling something in and out of this. And this is pretty light. I could like, I don't know, adhere it to the top or do something like that at some point. But um, it's my top port. I'm gonna go right here. I named it Everett's Cottage. And we are doing block, because we gotta make sure it doesn't have five, three, seven, four. We're gonna do block five. So let's go to block number five. It's going to be this one right here and let's program. So I'm going to go ahead and hit set and um, we want to rotate. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees to the right all the time just to be consistent. And that's it. Now we're going to go and edit. This is your button right here for color sequencing. So I'm going to go ahead and touch that. This is where we program. So we want to make sure needle number one is going to 870. That's right. Needle number two is 3852. Yep. Needle number three is 1161. And if I didn't get it right, I could go ahead and switch. Um, needle number four is 776. And I can see the colors listed on there because I wrote them really big. Uh, needle number five is 1346, 1874, 1133. Back here is going to be 1141 and 870. Oh, actually, 870 is back to needle number one again. So I'd put 873 up there. So we need to, with color number nine, which is right here, I'm going to take that and I'm going to send it back to needle number one. And now you see it's going to go to needle number one. The other thing I'm going to do right here is I'm going to put in a pause. And that's going to allow me to put in red thread in my bobbin. Can I get rid of that pause? I can't. It's in there some for some reason. I'm going to say, okay, we're programmed and ready to go. I'm going to say embroidery. I need to put my hoop on. So let's go ahead and hoop. Let me show you how I hoop. For me, the belly is the important part of hooping when I do this. Maybe I can get this side view for you. And I will remedy tomorrow, somehow, I will figure out that color. I'll probably give a little check mark here so I know which ones I've done. Let's see if I can get this from the side so you can see how I hoop. Okay. I feel like my sewing room is so organized right now. I'm just super motivated to keep it nice and neat. So... Here's my hoop. Once you size it once, you shouldn't have to size it again. This is your outer hoop, your inner hoop. It's gonna just fit in just like that. This goes either way, so it really doesn't matter. What matters is if you do take it off the machine, that you put it back on the way you took it off, like that you don't flip your hoop the opposite direction. Here's all my stabilizer that I cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna start hooping at the very top. I'm gonna hoop here. We're going to embroider. Once we're done, we're going to unhoop, do the next hooping, do the next hooping, do the next hooping. So, like I said, this is barely going to cover this hoop. If you're uncomfortable with that, then cut your pieces bigger. But this is barely going to cover it. I'm going to lay this down so I have an equal amount on either side. I'm going to lay this down on top. And just hold it there. I'm going to take this and I like to get it in on the top first. I hold this with my belly and I make it taut. I pull back on my fabric and then I'm going to muscle it in. And I might have to do it twice. And I might have to open up my hoop a little bit. So it looks like I'm going to have to open up my hoop just a little bit right here. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, let me do that again. So you can see the outline 
of where the hoop's going. So I'm really using it from edge to edge. I'll show you what it looks like from the back. Gonna put this on top. I'm gonna grab this, put it down. With my belly, hold my fabric and pull, stretch this back so it's nice and taut. Uh, once we get it in the first time, it'll be set. Okay, that just tells me we gotta open it up a little more. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Hold this, make it taut. Make it a little bigger. There we go. Okay, we're in. Um, I am going to take it out and make it nice and smooth again. And it's called burping it. Like once you set it in there once, now we can go ahead and set it in there again, and it should go in a lot easier. And there you go. This is what it looks like from the back. So you see, I have all of my stabilizer in there, but if you feel like that's too hard for you to do. Cut big pieces of stabilizer and just cut two of them. If you feel like your fabric needs a little be a little bit wider, I'm happy with 12 inches, but maybe you want to go 12.5, okay? And we're hooped. We're ready for our first stitch out. So I'm going to take this, come back over to the machine. We're just going to slide it on. Oh, my arm. I must have done something big. I'm going to slide this down. The first setting is four by four. The next setting is your five by seven. This screw right here, I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't, but not the outside screw, the inside screw, that's your important screw. That's the one that tells your machine what size hoop you're gonna be using. I'm gonna slide this on. And guess what? We're done. You're just gonna go ahead and if I'm not attending to the machine, if I'm not sitting right next to it, if I'm running around and going upstairs, I usually stitch at 800 stitches per minute, which is right here, but you can, I mean, I'm in the room, so we'll just go 1,000 stitches per minute. This is your lock and unlock button, and we're off to the races. You don't need to do anything else. You can go work on whatever you wanna work on, and you're just gonna let the machine do the work for you. All right, we'll come back here when this is done stitching out. You wanna see a little bit of this stitch out? It's gonna be gorgeous. And I'll come back here when this one is done and I'll show you how we hoop up for the next one. It is so beautiful. I had to film a little bit, but this is how it's stitching out. I don't know if you can appreciate that, but it just looks, <laughs> maybe it does, it looks gorgeous to me. It might look like a scribbly mess, but it is gonna look so incredible. We are 17 minutes into 27 minutes. I have just been walking around my room, cleaning up and organizing with my new hobby, and the machine has just been doing its magic. See you back here in 10 more minutes. Oh my goodness, this one is almost done. Oh, you know, I don't know why it paused there. Um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna start it again. This is the pause I'm interested in. So it's doing right now uh, eight. I was just going, maybe I should look at the instructions to see if something, oh my goodness. You have got to look at the detail right there. Those are pine needles. Is that amazing? That looks unbelievable. I'm in love, absolutely in love with this. So um, what we're looking for is it's finishing this one up. It's doing this color right now, two minutes. And then once it gets here, that's where we're gonna put our white bobbin. And I know it says black, but what you really want is you want a color that's gonna match your background fabric. So 870 is a good choice for us. So you wanna get a red bobbin. 
I have this one. We'll finish this up. It's just doing an outline stitch, so I don't need more than this. We're going to let it finish up. And I have more red bobbins. If they're not red, that's fine. So you definitely want something that's a color other than, uh, you want a color other than white. I'm looking for the rest of my red ones. We go this is what I normally use they're just fill tech and you want L bobbins not class 15 L's let's let's do another close-up those look unbelievable okay um it's paused for me because I put a hand in I am just going to open this up Take out my bobbin case, take out my bobbin. I'm gonna put the red one in, and we're gonna do the last stitch out, which is gonna be an outline stitch, and that tells us where to sew when we go to sew it all together. And then we're gonna go ahead and we will hoop up for the next hooping. We are gonna be doing block number six. I don't get confused I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check this one off we are done with five okay we're ready for the next one let's come on over here I'll show you how I hoop so this is our first one and that's what it looks like okay I'm gonna unhoop this. We shouldn't have to size this again. You know, I struggled with that a little bit. I am going to tear away the heavyweight. And if you have to do it separately, you can do it separately. Support that stitch. Don't just hold it here and just rip it back. Keep your finger on that other stitch. You know what, I might just do this separately be prepared I hear one of my children coming in Can baby girl number one <laughs> did you hear her just say oh I'm number one <laughs> siblings And if it's too hard to rip away both layers at once, like I said, just do one layer at a time. You want to get rid of all of that. I usually will write in here, this is going to be block number one. So this is, oh no, it's number five, right? There's number five. Okay, ready for a next tubing. This looks so incredible. Those little trees and, okay, we're going to do our next tubing. How did that get over here? Let's grab a piece of stabilizer. Remember, this is, it's opposite. This is our outer hoop. We're gonna put it here and then we push our inner hoop in. We're gonna lay this down. And really what I wanna see is, and I don't know if you can see this, I'm laying it down so I see a little bit of the top hoop over, or the hoop over here, and a little bit of the gray over on this side. And I want it right in the middle. I'm gonna grab this. And for me, what makes sense is this edge right here is gonna be right at the top. That's That gives me perspective on how I'm hooping. 
and put it right there line everything up we might have to do it twice I'm gonna hold this here belly belly my belly's gonna hold my fabric and we're gonna pull this away from me so everything's nice and taut Because of that stitching, I might open, open it up just a little bit more. You don't want it too loose. We're going to go and do it again. Right here, I'm going to hold this in my belly. There we go. And in. You don't want it too loose. I'm going to push this back. I'm going to feel. If it feels lumpy or bumpy, I'm going to do it again. Feels pretty good. This feels pretty flat. So let's go ahead and slide it on and then we're going to program. Make sure that this is flush. That your inner hoop is flush with your outer hoop. And that it's not too far forward. Don't forget, we put a red bobbin in. Let's change it out back to our white bobbin. And uh, let me put that in there. And if you accidentally, I've done, I've done many a tile where I forgot to change my bobbin out and it was all red. Just make sure when you do your last stitch out that you do white instead so you can see it. There we go. Let's go ahead and program. That one is finished. I'm just gonna say, okay. And I'm gonna go home. That's gonna clear my screen. Top USB. Everett's Cottage, we are doing six. So here's number six. This one is so easy peasy. So the first color is 870. I can see my 870 over there on needle number one. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna rotate this. Rotate 90 degrees to the right, okay, and edit. This screen has my color sequence, my manual color sequencing. So the first one is 870, so it's already where it needs to be. Next one is 3953. Oh, I got scared for a second. That uh, So let me grab 3953. 3953. I didn't already grab that. Here's our 3953. I have one needle open, and that is going to be needle number 10. So let's put it there. I'm going to tie it off. The screen that I go to to thread is going to be this one right here. And I got to go to needle number 10. I'm going to just grab it right here at the needle. I'm going to pull until the knot comes through. I'm going to hit my threading button. And I'm going to go up and around and hit my threading button again. And we are threaded. Pretty easy. Okay, let's go back to threading. This is my, uh, I'm sorry, let's go back to programming. This is my threading screen. I'm going to get out of here. So now number two, that has 38.52 on it. I want number 10, so I'm going to touch that, change it to 10, and we're done. Let's go to needle number three. It wants to go to 11.61. That's right. Um, four is 873. 873 is on needle number nine. So I'm going to touch that and I'm going to switch it to number nine. And then the last one, we're just, I know it says five, but we are going to go to needle number one, which is the background color. So I'm going to do all of my outlines with 870. And I'm also going to put a pause in here. So I'm going to hit my hand. Uh-oh, puppy's getting into stuff she shouldn't be into. And that's it. We're going to say, okay, we are done. Embroidery, unlock and stitch. And the machine is going to do everything else for us. All right, I'll see you when this one's done. It's only 12 minutes of stitching. I'll be right back. Okay, so it has stopped so I can do my little bobbin change. So let me go ahead and change that out. I'm gonna put the red in. This is for the outline stitch. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and touch unlock. Now it's going to do the outline. We're just doing all the outlines in 870. 
And we are done with this one. This is number six. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cross it off the list. We can do number seven, but I can't do this one because of five, three, seven, four. Gotta figure that one out. So let's go here. It's gonna just chime and tell me that's done. And I'm gonna go home. That's gonna clear my screen. These are like the easiest ones of all because there's not many colors. Uh, the next one is number seven. So I'm going to come in here, Everett's Cottage, number seven. I'm going to set it, rotate to the right once, and edit. This is my second screen. That's where you're going to find your manual color sequencing. It wants 870. That's already on number one. 3852, that's already on number two. 1161, which is already on number three. And number four, I'm gonna send this back to one and I'm also gonna put in a pause. So it'll stop before it stitches that. It'll give me a chance to uh, to um, change my um, bobbin thread. This is, I'm gonna hit embroidery and this is this um, the page from which we stitch. I'm gonna change my bobbin back to white and then we're gonna hoop. And that is how easy it is. And I am doing the easiest ones right now just because I would happily do one of the more complicated ones. But because I'm missing that color, I was getting ready to cut some fab some kits. Okay, we are going to, this was all of my car. I have to pull all of that up, out. I'm going to recoup. We're going to do the next one. Let me grab a piece of stabilizer and we are going to do our belly hooping. Let me take this off. We're going to pop this out. It's going to be gorgeous once it's all next to each other. Okay, let's tear this off first. And like I said, you can always do one piece at a time. It'll make it easier. Because this is heavy. Look at that. Just tore right through. Might as well just remove it all since it's gone. Which is really funny, the red thread didn't even stick. Totally did that whole thing. So I have a perforation here and that's what I'm gonna go with when I go to sew it together. That is interesting. Didn't even notice. Okay, let's hoop up the next one. Grab your outer hoop, a piece of stabilizer, I'm going to lay that down first. Make sure you have an equal amount on the right and the left. Then we're going to lay this down. And I'm going to line up the edge of my last stitch line. I put the... I put the um, the red in, didn't I? I did put the red in because I had to take it out. That's really strange. What happened? Okay. I like to put that stitch line. I can feel the top of my hoop. That gives me point of reference because you're going to, when we go to um, uh, trim these, you're going to go half an inch outside. So you need at least an inch in between. So I'll show you what I have. Put that in, put my belly against her to make it nice and taut. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time though. I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna do this one more turn. 
make it a little bit easier for me. There we go. And that should be good. Now I'm going to turn this to the back and just make sure my inner hoop is flush with my outer hoop. I think I found the sweet spot. And we are ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. I definitely have a white bobbin in there. I'm sure of it. Now the other thing is you need to either cut those back pieces off or fluff them and make sure that they're not curled under. I'm going to go ahead and unlock and start stitching. And that is how we do a tiling scene. Um, when I'm all done, I'll try and post a video of me sewing it all together. And maybe I can give you some tips and tricks. Have a great night. Bye.